production tab. You all seem to know how to cast this game. You're correct me when I'm wrong, so just, you know, do it on your own for a second here. Uh, this one, and then this two, but I want my logo to stay, so I'll move that here. And we'll turn that on, and I think that's all I need. Let me check. Okay, and just the world and solo silva logos. Yeah, I was spending a time right about a left corner of the map. It's gonna be his reply. And his opponent's in fucking Arthur. Hang on, guys. Sorry. Uh, Eddie, respond faster so I can cast this game, please. All right. Well, we'll go with this for now. This is at least at least two of the logos I know we need to have. Uh, keep in mind that uh, we've separated ours like last night because this is our channel sponsor here. Uh, these these guys though they sponsor the event. Uh, one is the OSC logo. It's the OSC points and the prize system and all that. The other is Solo Silver Photography. And there we go. All right. Well, he said that's all I need, so we're gonna rock into it. Welcome to the Masters Cup. Spawning here in the top right. I've also had it confirmed that it is a best of three. It's gonna be the yellow Protoss Arthur, who missed scouts first. Not a big deal. Uh, his opponent in the bottom left gonna be Nacer Bly. Now we really like seeing Bly on the channel. He can. Uh, do some pretty cool things, I think it's safe to say. Be aggressive, be a bit of a wang. But I think more importantly than that, Bly has fought Arthur, I'd say a good amount of times. You know, be it go for StarCraft Cups, be it through OSC events like Master's Cup. Uh, for those who don't know, Master's Cup classically I think has been like every third one is like open to anybody and everybody and then the rest are pretty much C residents and uh... Yeah, so they fought each other a lot, especially over the last year and a half or so, and I'm pretty sure they're aware of each other. You know, Bly's aware Arthur's a little bit cheeky, and Arthur's aware Bly's very aggressive. So I'm hoping that this series isn't one that ends very one-sidedly, poorly, and, you know, unenthusiastically. But it very well could, just because they know each other so well, and they play the styles that they do. On the other hand, though, we could get some really crazy shit as a result. We'll have to wait and see. As uh, Arthur's gonna have a lot harder time cheesing somebody like Bly than he would, say, a Terran player via Blink All In. But, uh, I guess with the links coming in, there's not a lot to scout initially. Uh, he's actually trying to squeeze past this and go to the main, but this is Zealot waiting for him. And this is. I, I like the Sim City out of Arthur. Normally you would try and set this up at the natural or such, but. This base does have a pretty wide ramp. Not super wide, not crazy broken wide, but it is pretty wide, and you don't want to have to dedicate too much of a wall up front, especially if it's not going to be a forge expand or anything down in time. So, I guess this is pretty cool. Um, there's a time where Puck was really one of the only players who would do moves like this, intentionally, too, versus Zerg. And I always thought, like, man, I don't know why more people didn't do it. It's a great plan B if your first wall fails. Arthur's going to connect the second wall to the Nexus. I mean, it's it's a it's a different way about protecting your natural, but it kind of accomplishes the same goal at the end of the day. Now these lings still not going to get past here to kill anything up in the main, but they might get uh, maybe a gateway, maybe a pylon. They're certainly going to put the hurt on the nexus, but I don't think this is nearly enough to force uh, force a cancel. Anything too dangerous, at least. Meanwhile, back at home, he's just gone back to droning. Bly didn't pump out 14 more lings behind this. Uh, I'm not sure if he'd go for a fast third. A little bit risky against somebody like Arthur, who uh, we did just see in a previous tournament, Desert's Cup, but this is no longer TVP, TVP, TVP. It's uh, uh, one of the, f the very first ZVP we've seen today. And I guess um, gold base is going to be the choice for Bly. The Roach Warren follow-up would be kind of cool to see Nidus play. He's actually been pretty keen on doing this lately. But uh, we'll see where this leads. we got someone in the chat asking, who did the hell? It's Base Tree TV voice. Uh, the actual actor who played Tychus Finley, Neil Kaplan is his name if you want to look him up. He's done a lot of other voices you've probably heard too from like uh, Transformers to StarCraft. But he's uh, he was a very nice guy and did a voice clip for us. It was pretty cool, pretty nerdy. It was like what we were small time too, you know, not exactly hot shots like we are nowadays. And it's probably my favorite intro to play relentlessly, even if it doesn't fit the spot. And we'll probably keep it for a long time. <laughs> but I'm also kind of hoping 
Like, it'd be so cool. Oh, man, it would never happen. I have been, I would write, if I thought it was even possible, I would write Trisha L for, like, tweets, letters, emails every day to get her to, like, record a voice for us, too. It'd be so cool to have, like, a Kerrigan clip in there somewhere, but that's, uh... That's a whole nother can of worms. Neil Kaplan worked out really nicely for us because, um, not to divulge too much information, one of our subscribers actually knows him. So it was really cool that he was able to connect us. And, uh, he knows who he is. Big shout out to him. But speed does finish. And, well, later on the way, Bly's not exactly rocketing here with his tech, but, uh, not exactly needing to. I imagine mutas are definitely a thought of his at the moment. Despite going for roaches, he still hasn't thrown down an evo chamber. We don't see you know, plus one weapon upgrades or anything. But as much as I'm sure he would love to go straight to mutas, he's got to be thinking, it's Arthur. There's probably some sort of crazy gateway all incoming. Warp prism shenanigans to my main. I mean, again, Arthur's a pretty predictable player once you've played him enough. Oh, I've got to swap us on Team Liquid. I'm going to go do that too before the action picks up. So we'll just follow the sentries for a moment. Whilst they do that. Sorry guys, it's never uh, never clean hopping from one cast to another. It's always a little bit messy. But I think that does it. And of course I'll go tweet about it a little bit later. Uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in tonight for this crazy long marathon cast. Uh, two cups back to back. It's not something I would normally do, but you know, Desiree, despite not being here right now, is uh, going to be accompanying me through it. Now, these lanes are being torn off, or I guess not torn off, shoot off, better way to phrase it, by the cannon. Second one's gonna finish up in a second, but not before they get the pylon. So this will be a pretty nice kill. Get in, get out. <laughs> get out be the key part of that. There we go. Some pylons at the front he may be able to go for, but he's definitely thinking about this attack that's coming across the map. That's a lot of sentries. And Arthur's got a war- uh, ooh, nice force fields, actually. Yeah, he's got a, uh, the recall behind this, but- Oh, Bly, I didn't even notice he went for Burrow behind this. Really nice moves. Uh, keeps all the drones alive. Of course, there's no detection here. He might try and go for the hatchery as a consolation prize, but honestly, yeah, a recall is probably his best bet. Minimize the losses. Bly takes almost no drone losses from that attack. Great, great, great moves. But despite having that burrow, his opponent does have plus one over him. He's got plus two weapon upgrades on the way. Blinks, kind of a cool addition, but uh... yeah, I don't know. This is uh, an interesting way for this to shape up. Blind that gold base though for so long is just going to be really difficult for Arthur to overcome. The longer he lets that go, the worse it's going to get for you know Bly getting to 200 supply while Arthur's barely on like 114 or something. Uh, so the War Prism is kind of a cool move, knowing he's not going to get pylons out so comfortably. Again, looking at that blink, you know, plus two blink stalkers is okay for the mid game, plus three blink stalkers is great for the late game. But will these sentries be enough? That's a lot of roaches coming down the middle of the map. I don't think he's going to break the front door, but the pressure he's putting on Arthur keeps him from taking a third. And it gives Bly the option to take a fourth, and hell, if he really wanted to, he could probably take a fifth. Uh, either way, that gold base is giving him a lot of money right now. Uh, tunneling claws as well. Maybe you could pass those force fields. Maybe we might actually try and take the fight if that's the case. There is, after all, only one immortal at the moment. Stalker damage is... It's kind of scary. It really is. But if you can get on top of those sentries to take them out, nothing really scares you. Uh, the Zergling Burrowed as well. Not just to block the third base, but also to provide vision, as overlords would otherwise be picked off. So he knows where the army is. Uh, Arthur, though, also knows where well, his army is, thanks to that observer. Also going to be able to detect those tunneling glass. But there's the Spire I talked about earlier. Coming down, Bly loves to go for base trades when given the opportunity. But despite having Burrow not using it, just kind of losing the roaches. Why? Whee! Giving them all away for free. Not even try. I mean, like, I guess he might know there's an observer there and doesn't want to waste it. Either way, that's a lot of roaches dead for, well, force fields. Uh, nice catch out of Arthur, but it still doesn't catch him up quite yet from that earlier attack. And... I mean, it's, it's roaches. They're not exactly the most expensive losses in the first it's place. It's a little bit weird uh, that Bly was floating so much minerals and gas. Welcome back. Like it's not, Yeah, welcome back. It's not like he's got that much gas to make this many mutas, but it feels like he's been floating 1,000 minerals uh, well, in, forever now. In fairness, I think it's a lot to do with like him not having the larva, as we can see, to spend yeah, it on. Yeah, with the, a gold base worth of economy. Field. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, maybe you pump out a ton of queens, maybe throw in some spines, I don't know. But he loses his army on the right side of the map, and this is actually pretty scary. As he doesn't have, a, again, a lot of larva to work with. Everything he's doing is going to roaches. He's going to eventually want to make mutas, but uh, at least he's got tunneling claws this time. So maybe he doesn't get so screwed by force fields. Stalker's going to blink on top of this. Plus two weapon upgrades is done. This army's looking pretty scary. What do you think, Tezro? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's just really rough right now. Uh... 
But there's only one immortal though. But it's just that Bly is never gonna spend that money. Like, yeah, he's making 12 archers right now, but oh, all those zealots in the main. Yep. Chase him off, gets a lot of damage done. He's pushing up the natural now. Still a good chunk of force fields available. I'd say about maybe six eyeballing the army really quick, so it's not too bad for the next fight. And uh, Bly, while well, he's not mining on the gold, transferred over here to the bottom right out of fear. Not a bad move, but oh, I don't know, Desiree. He's not floating money anymore, and he's still not looking any better for it. Yeah. Yeah, the only one immortal in this fight. Uh, Tunneling Claw, no use yet. Uh, the force fields are really nice. Not all the roaches can attack, and uh, was that a mistake by Bly to not go under the force fields? I feel hmm. like he didn't get that much caught on the other side of it, and with the drones pulled, he could have just backed away from that instead of taking the struggles. Uh, he tries to go for a counterattack when this goes on, but that photon overcharge and two cannons is going to be more than enough to stop this from uh, getting out. And that immortal, too. <laughs> yeah, it pops out just <laughs> in the nick of time. Uh, this looks like it's pretty much over for Bly. Really, really abusive uh, moves out of Arthur. I mean, Bly got away, you know, you missed the first part of the game. He got away with a very quick third at the gold. Really didn't take any damage for so long. But, good game. Map one goes to Arthur. What, what was up with that N? Is that like the Russian language? Uh, first off, he's not Russian. Secondly, he's Ukrainian.